Have you ever wondered what would happen if someone was to die at a hospital? Well, the process is like this. Typically, a family member or the facility itself, the hospital, notifies the funeral home, notifies us of the death. Uh, at that point, that initial contact, we were able to get the deceased person's name, uh, the name of the, of the hospital, uh, perhaps the doctor in charge, and very importantly, the next of kin. So we can then contact the next of kin and, and have communications going there. At the hospital, uh, that's where all things like um, anatomical donation, investigations, administration must be completed there before we are ever able to go and bring a deceased person into our care. In most hospitals, funeral homes need to connect with either security or the, the keepers of the administration at that hospital. We need to make ourselves known, uh, become registered by them, explain what we're doing there. We're gonna deal with health records uh, and the other folks that would uh, know why we're there and we're about to exchange custody with them. Once we're set up and we're known to them, we're then moving then to a more less public part of the hospital. Morgues and holding rooms tend to be in the non-public parts of hospitals, usually in the more industrialized part of hospitals, uh, where we then transfer our vehicle around to, the, to that area, where then we're gonna deal directly with the keepers of the morgue, of the holding area. It's very important to think of this as an exchange of custody as we're making sure that the correct person person is being uh, released to us and we're then receiving the correct person. Very important on both sides of this relationship that uh, proper identification protocols are put in place and uh, no errors are made. And also little things like um, personal effects that could be with a deceased person are with them indeed. We would sign for those effects, bring them into our care. The size of morgues depends on the size of the hospital. Some are designed to hold a great number of deceased patients, while others are designed to hold very few. Once we've completed the process of uh, identifying the person, signing the, the, the documents with the hospital, with the keeper of the morgue, we would then very carefully place our client with us into the vehicle, and then we would return back to the funeral home beginning the next stages there, whether they're burial or cremation or body donation. But hey, that's another video.